hardy, brave, patriotic, these are the qualities many Americans associate with the pioneers who forged West during the early years of the United States. But there is another characteristic these men and women seem to have in common, they were all white. Not so, as this extraordinary collection of photographs showing early black pioneers shows. They depict some of the thousands of freed black slaves who made the journey from the south and east towards the perilous western frontier to form new settlements on land seized from Native Americans. Their story has been told in a new book, The Bone and Sinew of the Land, in which historian Annalisa Cox examines black settlements established in the Northwest Territory, the area that would become the modern states of Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin. It tells the story of settlers like Keziah and Charles Grier, who started clearing their frontier land in 1818. At the time the Greers merely wanted a new home, but their role as black settlers meant they would soon play a key role in the fight against racial inequality. Within a few years, the Greers would become early Underground Railroad conductors, joining with fellow pioneers and other allies to confront racial discrimination. Though forgotten today, in their own time the successes of these pioneers made them the targets of racist backlash. Political and even armed battles soon ensued, tearing apart families and communities long before the Civil War. Cox used census records, deeds and other archival documents to find the locations of as many settlements as possible that contained at least one African-American-owned farm between 1800 and 1860. Eventually she found 338. Share this article share every single time I thought I'd found them all, I was wrong, Cox writes in a section of the book seen by Atlas Obscura. I just kept on finding more. The black settlers understood that, by colonizing the newest portion of the nation, they were laying claim to citizenship in powerful ways. The ordinance that created the Northwest Territory outlawed slavery there and did not place racial restrictions on voting. These pioneers really had the best ideals of the revolution at heart, Cox writes. That's how this region was originally envisioned, and free African Americans were moving onto that frontier with that vision. They were integrating the frontier. They were integrating the Northwest Territory. Many of the old settlements are now long gone either paved over and overgrown and buried by trees or vast fields of corn. But some became rich and still survive to this day, such as Roberts' settlement, which began in 1835 when Hansel and Elijah Roberts and Macadra Walden of North Carolina bought land in Hamilton County near anti-slavery Quakers. In 1847, the settlement had grown to include a church meeting house and a school. Other settlers were less fortunate and struggled due to a lack of resources and the harsh environment. Their fortunes also declined when white settlers began pouring in and established states that restricted black voting rights. The violent backdrop of frontier life and the dispossession of native peoples that it required are a constant refrain in Cox's book. The frontier is not a place of heroism and sweetness and light. It's a place of violence, injustice, and devastation, she writes in summary. But the term pioneer and the term frontier, however difficult, are still totemic and highly potent terms in our sense of ourselves as a nation. If we forget that free African Americans were part of the earliest settlement movement of our first frontier, then we have lost an important aspect of our American past.